I work at a gas station in rural Pennsylvania. It's a boring job, but it's pretty easy. It pays all right. A few weeks ago, this new guy started. I'll call him Jeremy. Jeremy is weird. He's about 25 or 26, and he hardly speaks. But he's got the creepiest laugh I've ever heard. My boss and I have both noticed this, but it's never been a problem, so there's not much we can do about it. The customers have never complained about him, and he's always done his job fairly well. Up until a few weeks ago, anyway. And that's when things started going missing. Employee theft can be a problem in any business that sells consumer goods, and there's only one person working at this time at the gas station. It's a pretty small place. About two weeks ago, my boss started noticing that we were short on motor oil. At first, it was a few containers at a time, then entire shelves and boxes from the back room. Pretty soon, entire shipments would be gone the next day after we got them, and it would always be right after Jeremy's shifts. My boss had checked the security tapes from every single night that he worked, but he could never catch him in the act. Jeremy would lock up at closing, and the motor oil would be gone the next day. My boss usually takes the tapes home with him to try and catch Jeremy stealing, but his daughter has a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tape for him. He offered to pay me overtime under the table, so obviously I took the offer. There are three cameras, so he gave me three different tapes to check. I figured it would be a long night, but... I'm trying to save up for a vacation, so I really needed the money. I took the tapes home, popped them in an old VCR, and sat back. Two days ago, the last time he worked, Jeremy started at 4 p.m. Everything seemed pretty normal at first. He counted up his drawer, switched off with the girl who had worked before him, and waited for a customer. The first person who came in was Mrs. Templeton. The timestamp on the video read 403, a regular. She picked up her cigarettes in a newspaper and paid with a 20. Nothing unusual there. The next customer was a local guy named Ron. He drives a motorcycle, usually comes in every few days. He filled up his tank, got a bag of beef jerky, with, paid with a credit card, and then left. Next was some guy with a cowboy hat. I'd never seen him before, but we get plenty of strangers passing through, just like any gas station. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel, paid with a $100 bill, and went on his way. I sat back inside. The only thing more boring than doing this job is watching someone else do it. My boss's offer was enough to keep me watching, though. So I left the tape on. Everything seemed pretty normal. I had a feeling that if Jeremy was stealing motor oil, he knew we were suspicious of him by now. I didn't expect him to be dumb enough to let us catch him on camera. Things stayed boring and routine until about 5 o'clock. At 5.03, Mrs. Templeton came back in. She must have forgotten something. But she didn't. She bought the same pack of cigarettes as before. And the same newspaper. She paid with another 20. That's odd, I thought. But then again, she's a little absent-minded. I thought Jeremy should have told her that she already got smokes, but it's not against the rules to sell somebody the same thing twice. That's when Ron came in again. He bought another tank of gas for his motorcycle again. I let him check the outer camera because I thought maybe he had another car that he wanted to fill up. And the same pack of beef jerky. He paid with his credit card again. No big deal. I figured this was just a weird coincidence. Mrs. Templeton forgot, and Ron probably owned more than one Harley. That's when the guy in the cowboy hat came back in. I felt a chill run down my spine. Don't get diesel. Don't get diesel. But he did. He got $40 worth of diesel, and paid with another $100 bill. Every move he made was identical to his first visit, right down to the way he scratched his nose before walking out. Either the guy was rich, owned a lot of trucks, and just moved into town, or something really bizarre was happening. I kept watching. Every customer for the next hour 
was the same as before. Every single one. I was seriously freaked out. And then at 6.03, Mrs. Templeton walked back in. She bought her cigarettes and newspaper again and paid with a $20 bill. I thought I was going to lose it. I only watched another half hour before I started fast-forwarding through the rest. It was all the same. Every customer would come in at the exact same time, exactly one hour apart. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sneaky motherfucker Jeremy had messed with the tapes. He had run a loop of his first hour of business over and over and over. And that wasn't the case. There are windows at the cash register area the, that the camera covers. And I watched the sunlight fade as time ran on. Jeremy's routine didn't loop. He swept, mopped, restocked, and did all his duties exactly how you would expect. But the same customers kept coming in. I was panicking at this point. Something was seriously wrong with what I was seeing, and I had no explanation for it. I skipped ahead to when he'd locked up and walked out to his car. He hadn't stolen anything, but he kept watching, just to make sure. I fast-forwarded one last time to about midnight. Exactly 12.03, out of nowhere, Jeremy's face popped up on the camera. I don't mean he moved his head into view, I mean, one second the store was empty. The next second, his face was all I could see. He wasn't looking at the camera. He was looking at me. I'm sure of it. I screamed and fumbled for the remote. By the time I grabbed it, he was gone. Just as soon as he had left. One frame he was there, the next he wasn't. My hands were shaking like crazy, but I popped in another tape. The other indoor camera showed the back area, by the cash register, and I'd be able to see how he got up to put his face in camera like that. I skipped ahead to 1203, but there was nothing. I would have been able to see him standing on a chair or something on this tape, but he wasn't there. I didn't see him enter the store at all after he left. It's like he wasn't really there. He doesn't know the security code and no alarms were triggered that night after he locked up. What I did see, however, was that at 12.03, the motor oil vanished off the shelf. All of it. Same as Jeremy's face. One second it was there, the next it wasn't. I turned the tape off and went to bed. I didn't get a wink of sleep. My body was exhausted right now, but my mind was racing. That tape was undoubtedly the creepiest, most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. I work in a few hours. My boss asked me to bring the tapes back in and let him know what I found, but really, what the hell am I going to say? Jeremy works the night shift tonight, directly after me and the plan is for my boss to come in just before I leave and confront him with me, as I'm supposed to be the one who caught him stealing. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I suppose I have to show my boss the tapes, but I don't want to watch them with him. I never want to see something like that again. I can't get the image of Jeremy just smiling directly into the camera out of my mind. It was the creepiest look I've ever seen on another human being's face. Anyway, I'm going to get some last minute sleep before I have to go in and deal with this. I'll let you guys know what happens. Update. 2.49 p.m. Updating from my phone. Apologies in advance for errors. My boss just finished watching the last of the tapes. I told him what to expect, but you really can't prepare someone for something like that. He's scared shitless. I am too. And Jeremy's due to come in at four. We've got a little over an hour to get this shit together, but neither one of us knows what to say to him. Is he just a fucked up guy who likes to steal motor oil and scare the shit out of people? Or is he something else? I don't know if this is crazy, but does... Does anyone think... Does anyone think he could have anything to do with the time loop? My boss says he never noticed anything like this in the other tapes. 
but the way he popped up in this one made me think he knew I would be watching. It's like he wanted me to see, like he was showing off or something. The way he smiled into the camera like a little kid showing you a sand castle, something like that. I don't know. I probably sound crazy, I'm sure. I sure feel the part. I'm going to talk to my boss some more. We have to calm ourselves down and figure out how to handle this. I'll update again tonight, but I have a really bad feeling about how this is going to play out. Update. 4.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 5.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 6.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 7.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 8.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 10.59 p.m. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! I just got home and I saw my previous updates. Things make less sense now than ever. Here's what I can tell you. I went to work, Jeremy never showed up, my boss and I decided to call the police, as you're well aware. When I picked up the phone to call, the sun went out. I shit you not, that's what I thought happened. Apparently I blacked out for exactly five hours because when I looked at the clock, it was 9.30. I think I got stuck in Jeremy's time loop and then I snapped out of it at the exact moment I blacked out. If that makes sense, but... That's when things get really weird. My boss was right next to me when I blacked out, ready to corroborate my story to the cops. When I came to, the phone was in my hand, but it was dead. Not even a dial tone. My boss was still right there, but he wasn't moving. He was standing up, but frozen. I looked at the clock again, and it wasn't moving. The second hand was stuck on the 12. It was 9.33 exactly. Clock on the register. Computer screen. It wasn't moving either. My phone was frozen. There was even a customer at the register waiting for my boss to get him cigarettes. I'm betting that would have been his fifth pack of the day. I got the fuck out of there, didn't lock up, didn't turn the lights out, and sorry guys, I didn't grab the security tapes to upload to the internet. Believe me. That was the last thing on my mind. The gas station is on a major highway and cars were parked all around it except... They weren't parked, they were frozen. The people inside were sitting still as wax statues. I got in my car and prayed that it would start and thankfully it did. About halfway home, time started up again. The static from the radio turned into music like it was supposed to be and... From what I could tell, by listening to the host talking in between songs, no one noticed the time had frozen. It, whatever it was, I was the only one that did. Well, I'm sure Jeremy noticed as well. I still have no clue where he is or what he's doing. I'm hiding in my room and calling the police again in the morning. I don't know if I can... I don't know if I ever got through to them before, or if I did whether they took me seriously. I'm scared for my life at this point. I'll update tomorrow. If I can. Final update. 10.33 a.m. I finally fell asleep last night around 4. I have no idea how I did. I guess exhaustion finally got the best of me. This morning, I woke up to my phone ring. Here's my boss. He'd been calling me since about six. He woke up when the time turned back on last night and immediately called the cops. 
They came by to see what was wrong, and he told them everything, and the police around here are all small-time guys. They were more concerned with the missing motor oil than anything. But my boss figured he would take it, as long as he had their attention. They decided to go looking for Jeremy. We kept all our employees' applications on file, and since Jeremy just started working there, he was easy to find. They checked the address on it and headed over to his house. And you're not gonna believe what they found. The address Jeremy listed on his application was an empty lot. Or at least, now it is. There used to be a house there. But it burnt down in 1993. Being a small town, almost everyone remembers that fire. A family of four used to live there way back when. Rumor has it, they had an estranged son who they never really talked about, but I can't say for sure if that's true. What I can say is that after an insurance investigation, the fire was ruled an arson. The entire house was soaked in oil and torched with a Molotov cocktail. The entire family was sleeping when it happened. None of them survived. They never caught the guy who did it. Rumor has it that when they tried to contact the estranged son, no one could find him. Anyway, my boss called and told me this, and I freaked out. Then he asked me to come to the gas station. What are you, crazy? I said. But he assured me that the cops were there with him. Then he dropped a bomb. The FBI were also in town, and they were going to talk to me one way or another. So I might as well come in. It was about 7.15, and I wanted to go back to bed, but I figured I wasn't about to sleep much more anyway, so... I went down. Four men in suits greeted me and told me to have a seat. We went over everything two or three times until they got all the details down. I told them about Jeremy, the security tape, last night at work, everything. Finally, after I finished, one of the agents said, oh, Christ, we got another one on our hands. Then they made me sign a bunch of papers saying I wouldn't tell anyone about what happened so I can't say much more. I might be breaking the law by just posting this. So now I'm home. I'm not sure what to do with myself. That agent's words, when they told me the story, are going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got some errands to run today, and uh, then I have to go into work and pick up some tapes. My boss usually takes the tapes home with him to try and catch Jeremy stealing, but his daughter has a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tape for him. He offered to pay me overtime under the table, so obviously I took the offer. The oil, anyway, goes missing right after his shifts. I figure I'll just watch the tapes, catch him in the act, and that'll be that.